Ba, 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 ba. Hello. Hello, everybody. Oof da. All right. I am. I just got home a little bit ago and just finished dinner. And so I'm just getting set up. So bear with me. Oof da. All right. There we go. Awesome. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining me for Monday Mini Medicine Card Readings. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> so, if you haven't been here before, what we do is I have this fancy deck of cards that are called the medicine cards and they have different animals on them so we do card readings and if you haven't seen this before it's similar to just a regular tarot reading but instead of the arcana and the archetypes and all of that we work with the animal totems. And being a shaman, I work with the animal spirits anyway. So the cards are just kind of a launching pad for me. So I kind of intuitively and I hear what they, depending on who I am reading for, the different animals might have different messages, different um, attributes that they want um, emphasized. And so I do my best to translate what the message of the animals is, are. And that's what we do. So what we do here every Monday to give you a boost of guidance for the week to come, I pull three cards and you get to choose a number between one and three. Oh, hey, I'm Jonah. Hey, yay, yay. So you get to pick a number between one and three and I will pick, I will pull three cards and whichever card uh, corresponds to the number you picked. That is your message for the week. But you are also an unlimited being and you can choose as many numbers as you want. You don't have to pick just one. You can pick two numbers or all three. Oh, what am I doing? I'm running on about three hours of sleep and I just spent six or yeah six hours at a metaphysical store doing readings all day long so I may be just a little bit punchy but thank you for joining me I'm just smudging the cards and so if you're new here, thank you for showing up. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome. I am Patrick. I am the owner of Perching Wolf Studios, <clears throat> which is the Facebook page you're on if you're watching this, or if you're watching this in repeat, you're probably on my YouTube channel. And we're going to pull a few cards to get you going on your week, to find out what you need to focus on or what guidance or strength or whatever that you need. So pick a number between one and three or a couple numbers or all three numbers. All right. To cleanse your cards, I just, you saw me light, I light some sage. Let me show you. I 
I just I light sage and then I run the cards over like from east to west and west to east and then south to north and north to south and then I usually kind of flip through to get all the cards with the sage but and then like just like your crystals you can keep crystals with your cards to keep them clear to keep them charged um, so we're only doing three cards so choose a number between one and three I used to do six cards and it got kind of unwieldy especially on days like today where I, I was doing readings for six hours before this <laughs> um, so three cards you can choose one, two, or three, and, okay. So, number one, if one is the card you picked, you got turkey. Um, turkey is the giveaway bird. Turkey is about, um healthy reciprocity you know giving not giving more than you have so that it's a mutual benefit um turkey just just like the stories of the first thanksgiving whether it actually happened that way or not um turkey is the bird that was given to families to help feed them kind of in a way that we give like salt and wine to someone who's moving into a new house to bless them so that they never hunger and they never thirst. A turkey was what you gave people to help feed the family to let them know that they were taken care of. And so because turkey has so much meat on her bones, she can provide for lots and lots of people. And the thing is, the key to this is that Turkey needs to be healthy herself. Turkey needs to be um, taken care of in order to be to take care of others. So um, the Native Americans recognized this. They saw Turkey as kind of a, um, an embodiment of Mother Earth herself, this bountiful abundance, right? And so. They realized if they take care of turkey, turkey would take care of them. And so they would make sure that turkey had enough habitat, had enough um, protection in the woods, enough trees to, to roost in, enough ground cover, um, enough food, so that turkey was healthy because, you know, it's that whole thing about, I don't remember who said it, but... When we all do better, we all do better. So it's like recognizing that wellness, well-being is a mutual thing. It's, um, you can't, it's, it's, it's a non-zero sum. It's not, we don't have an equation and we have to equate the equation. We take something from one end of the equation and put it on the other end this one gets higher, this one goes lower. That is not the way it works. This is when one person raises, gets better, it raises the entire universe. We're all connected, we're all part of the same system, the same source energy. So what that means is, no matter what you were taught, no matter what religion you came up in, being a martyr is not a good thing. Sacrificing yourself, depleting yourself, your own reserves, in order to help someone else does not really help them. If it is not helping you, if you don't feel engaged afterwards, then you haven't helped anyone. All you've done is given someone else your power, and that's not healthy. 
Okay? Um, what was I going to say? So, by taking care of yourself, you are taking care of everybody around you. Um, and it really goes to the point where every single problem in the world, every single challenge stems from a lack of self-love because those who move from a place of love, self-love, self-appreciation, they don't need to take power from others or reversely give their power away to others because everyone is connected so the better and the better you are the more you have to give because you you become you know and there was, I talked about this last week with squirrel squirrel medicine came up and turkey is about abundance but it's not an abundance of hoarding everything so you make sure that you're taken care of in the future the abundance that Turkey speaks of is that abundance of opening to the flow of the universe, connecting to great spirit, and that energy, that spirit flows through you and out to others. It's like creator is your source of well-being. Creator is your source of abundance. No matter what it looks like, no matter where it looks like it's coming from or who it's coming from, Creator is the source and that that uh, source energy moving through you puts that, that resonance out into the world which attracts back to you the abundance that you need. The abundance is not having things. The abundance, abundance is being in the flow of things and things flow through just like money is called currency because it's meant to move. It's meant to flow. If it's being hoarded, it goes stagnant. It doesn't help anybody. And in the same manner, if you're a, a healer, an energy healer, a light worker, this is even more important because if you, if you go in and do a healing on someone, if you're doing like Reiki or energy healing of some sort, and you feel drained afterwards, you're doing it. I don't normally say this because there is no right or wrong, but if you're feeling drained afterwards, you're doing it wrong. Not, and it's not wrong like, oh my God, you're a sinner. It's wrong in that it's counterproductive. You are depleting your own energy. You're trying to heal someone else by projecting your energy onto them. That is not healthy. Number one, it depletes your energy and as good as they may feel in the moment, the energy you just put on them is not their energy. So that's another layer of the onion that they're going to have to eventually find their way out from under. Does that make sense? Um, so healers, Reiki, energy healers, light workers, when you are healing someone else, you're not pushing your energy. You're opening to the flow of universal energy that flows through you and out your hands. So it's not your energy. It's the universal energy flowing through you. So, case in point, that energy, that beautiful healing energy is moving through you first. So it's healing you as you heal others. It's a mutual benefit. Um... And so, and, if, uh, and the, on the flip side of that, if you're going to a Reiki practitioner or an energy worker, someone that when they get done, they feel just depleted and drained, don't go back because they aren't helping you. They might be tired. Like when I do soul retrievals and Reiki and stuff, I might be tired afterwards, but I'm not drained. I feel that, that kind of tired but wired, you know. When I do a Reiki thing, it's like I feel better. I feel kind of jazzed, kind of wired, but at the same time, I might be tired. But I'm definitely not 
drained, like, like all my energy is gone. If that's happening, then you need to open up the crown and open up to that universal energy to come through you. And in the same manner, you know, abundance doesn't mean just money. Abundance means health, well-being, wealth, all of those things. And so the more you open up to that universal energy, the more that abundance shows up in your outside world because it reflects that inside world and the more abundant and in the flow you are the more you have to offer other people there really is no separation um, if someone else is doing better you do better if you're doing better everyone else is doing better um, because we are all connected through the heart to creator it's one source, one divinity, no matter what you call it, him, her, we are all connected to that same source. And so it's like we're an orchestra. We each have our own part to play in the song, in the music. We have our own instruments, our own talents, etc., our own passions, the things we came here to do. So by following our heart, we're watching that same conductor. And this person next to me following their heart is listening to that same, watching that same director, conductor. And so if you're following your heart, doing what impassions you, you're automatically saving the world because you are following that same conductor and everyone that moves from the heart, that lives for that passion and that joy, following the bliss, um, you can't help but work in harmony because we're looking at the same conductor. So you're playing your part, taking your cues from your heart, from the source. Well, everyone else is doing the same thing. And so we work in harmony. Like a friend said one time, if we're all, we can't sing harmony if we're all singing the same note. It takes its diversity and we are all different facets of the same source. And so the way that we have beautiful music and songs is by each playing our own note, our own instrument, while someone else plays a whole different part and they mesh and they play and they meld. And that's how we get the beautiful universe that we live in, right? So in short, <clears throat> take care of yourself. You are the number one priority in your life. There is nobody, nobody more important than you in your life. There's nobody less important, but um, that's kind of beside the point. You are the priority. You are the number one priority in your life. Um, you owe it to everyone else to take care of yourself. And as we each answer that call to what impassions us, what causes our own bliss, then um, we all help raise the vibration of the planet. We all, and basically where we're headed is Star Trek. We're heading toward the Federation where everybody from childhood on is nurtured in their strengths and their talents and their desires so that everyone ends up doing what they love. And because everyone billions of people are doing what they individually love everything gets done it's a system it's connected there will be no gaps there's always someone who wants to do every single job so take care of yourself take everybody else out of the equation and feed yourself you know and not just food I'm talking about mentally, you know, we talk about, oh, watch what you feed yourself, you are what you eat. But we never take into consideration the music we listen to, the movies we watch, etc., etc. And you have to be careful what you feed your head and what you feed your heart. Um, because if you're constantly feeding it a diet of violence and conflict and all of that, 
that's what you're going to find in your outside world. And so it's like we nurture ourselves, we give ourselves good food to eat, healthy food that makes us stronger. And we also feed ourselves the stories and the music and the entertainment that also supports us and nurtures that strength within us. It's important what you listen to, what you watch. That's your own personal mythology. And just like mythology from the past cultures and past civilizations, it was the, it was the mythology that kind of, I don't want to say defined the culture, but it was, the mythology is their connection to, to the divine. And it is the, the stories that resonate with their hearts. So it's the filter, the interface between you and deity. And so if you're constantly feeding yourself stories of violence and, um, I don't know, abuse and, you know, murder and all this other stuff, that's what you're going to keep seeing in the world because the world reflects what's inside. So feed yourself. Take care of yourself. Take care of the world by taking care of yourself. Um, and don't give, it doesn't do anyone any good for you to sacrifice your own energy. You don't benefit anybody by sacrificing. It's always a win-win. Go for the win-win. If it's not a win-win situation, then it's not the right situation. All right? Okay. Number two. If two is your card, the one you got was bear. Bear with me. <laughs> um, bear is... Bear is about introspection. So if that's your card, number one, it could be that you need to step back. You need more time alone. You need introspection time, like the bear going into the cave. Um, you need stillness. You need rest. You need darkness. You need to... It's a time to cut off the exterior stimulation so that you can listen to the interior information and it's like going into the darkness so you don't see anything you don't hear anything because it's time for you to get in touch with your own energy um, without the influence of other people's energies or opinions or expectations or whatever so that might if that's your card that might be what you're needing. On the other hand, it could be that, you know, I just did, um, I just helped out with Gaia's Temple. Um, this It's a pagan house of worship in Seattle uh, by my dear friend Judith Laxer, who's the high priestess of it. And we did our Ostara ritual over the weekend. And I did the guided meditation. And what we did was basically we did this, this meditation where we woke up from hibernation. We became the bear who has been sleeping. And if you look back on the past year with the pandemic and how we've had to isolate We've had to pull inward. We've had to like look at ourselves like there's because there's no one else to look at. Right. And so it's been this time of introspection, introspection and isolation and sleep. It's been. And then if you take into consideration the entire four years of the last administration and the whole dark night of the soul that this period of time has been for us, um, at least especially in the States, um, it's like we've been asleep for four or five years. It's like we've been hibernating for four or five years and it's like nightmare after nightmare and, and um, just, you know, restlessness, like having restless sleep and dreams of disaster and chaos 
And I mean, how many people have you heard mention the last four years in terms of it was like a bad dream? Um, that's because we it was a dark night of the soul. We were in the cave. We were in the dark. And it's time to wake up again. It's not to wake up, to stop sleeping, but because we've been doing so much inner work and everyone is so exhausted from it. But it's like, um, it's Ostara now. It's spring equinox. It's uh, mid-spring. And so things are starting to quicken. The energy outside, all the creatures and the plant life is starting to quicken. There's there's that spark of life running through everything. Um, and so it comes time to realize, okay, this past year or this past four years was a bad dream. It was a bad hibernation. We went into the dark and we were sleeping. So what did, what are we ready to let go of? You know, what are we ready to shake off what parts of that dream we like, I am done with that. There is no way we're going back to normal because it didn't work before. And, and all the different things that came to the forefront over the past years, you know, Black Lives Matter and all the other protests and different awarenesses that actually came to the forefront, um, transgender rights, um, gay rights, immigrant rights, all of these things came to the forefront. It was like a bad dream, but it was like dream bringing those things to the surface so that we could look at them. And we are, we are definitely not the same people who went into the hibernation four years ago. We have seen things, we have learned things, and now we get to come out of the dark and decide what out of the darkness we're going to bring into the light. Um, and so looking back at the last four years, like, what are we ready? Let's let go of racism. Let's let go of hate. Let's let go of inequalities. Let's, let's make sure everybody is, is fed and nursed and taken care of so that we can be on a level with everybody and move forward as a, as a global community, right? So let's let go of all the hate, let go of all the prejudice, all of that. And so in this meditation I did, we did that and then we actually like stood up and just shook like a bear. We were like, shake it off, just shake it, shake it off, get rid of all those bad vibes, all the crap that kind of like the dirt and the dust and the ash that collects on your sleeping form when you're sleeping in the, in the cave. And then we roared. It's like roar, be the bear, roar, ready to meet the dawn. It's like the spring is springing. It's time to awaken, feel the quickening. There's a little more hope in the world now. There's a little more opening. There's a little more freedom. There's a little more respect and love and compassion. So let's roar our greeting to the day and wake and come out of it with those jewels of wisdom that we gained while we were sleeping. Does that make sense? And so if that's your card, perhaps it is time to just wake up and roar. Don't waste time in anger, don't waste time and blame. It's like, okay, oh God, that was a bad dream. But I'm here now. What can I do to move forward? And seize the day, right? Um, so yeah, it's like bear is waking up. We're waking the bear. It's time. And bear, bear is the original mother goddess bear is the oldest known deity to humankind um she was the original mother goddess um in the oldest grave sites the oldest human grave sites they were buried with bear skulls and bear bones because bear 
would essentially die in the winter and be reborn in the summer. She was like this mistress of death and life. And so it's like time to rebirth ourselves. That cave we were in is a womb. It's not evil. It's not that we're lost. That darkness of the cave is the womb. And like I said, as we come out of that cave, as we're born into the light, we get to decide which reality we're bringing with us into the light. Because in that darkness, all realities exist. Every possibility exists in the dark. It's the womb. It's the, it's the, the, what do I want to say? The bed of creativity. Everything comes from the darkness. It's dark because it's a mystery, not because it's evil. It's dark because we can't see the other side. And so it's that womb, that safe womb that we're held in, that safe space and sacred space that we get to dream and decide what we want in our lives. And then in the spring, as the, as the spring sun begins to waken us and warm the earth and quicken our blood, it's like we get to come forth and claim what it is we were dreaming of, claim what we want to find in our world, and bring that mother, goddess, bear, protective mother, nurturer energy into the world to heal um, all the, the rampant toxic masculinity that has been taking place in the past four years and before, but it's like that, it's the divine feminine coming awake. You know, it's it's like Kalima, the, the dark mother. You know, everyone focuses on her. She's the goddess of destruction, but she's the goddess of creation. And I actually had, I met her one time in a shamanic journey it was one of the most powerful experiences. And she told me that humans tend to focus, like we, we talk about life and death. And we're like, they're the two sides of the same coin. But we never get to the point where it's one coin. We keep focusing on the two sides, right? And she's like, creation and destruction are the same thing. Things are destroyed as other things are created. It's that eternal dance of energy and molecules. And as one thing dissipates, something else is created. It's the same exact moment. It's the same exact process. And so she is the dark mother who gives birth. Out of the dreams and out of all the other stuff that is ready to fall apart, all of the structures and things that are falling apart now in our society are falling apart in order to make room for this new surge of growth and birth and love and god i sound like a hippie um <laughs> but it's time it's time to wake up not like why are you still sleeping but time to wake up it's like okay i had my sleep I'm still groggy from the sleep. I'm not totally awake yet, but I am ready to claim my day and go after what it is I want. And, <clears throat> you know, go into the woods and find all the berries and all the honey that the earth so lovingly provides for me. You know, look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. The universe provides, the earth provides like turkey it's the abundance of the flow as we open to receive the flow of abundance the honey and the berries and everything else that feeds us we give back to the universe and feed the world okay so that's number two number three if three was your card the one you got was raccoon Raccoon is kind of a complex character. He's kind of a trickster, you know, like you think about Coyote being a trickster. But 
Not that Coyote is mean-spirited or anything like that, but Raccoon is more of the trickster who helps you by lightening your spirit, like will tell you a joke, will, will make you laugh, and you not realizing that that's what you needed, everything else just falls away, and all of a sudden you're like, whoa, I feel much better now. All I did was laugh, you know. Raccoon is that rascally, I always think of him as kind of the, the Robin Hood of the animal kingdom, kind of that noble thief. Um, in particular, I always think of the Errol Flynn version of Robin Hood and, and you know, everything's a game, everything's a, an adventure. And even though, you know, he's doing these things, taken from the rich and giving to the poor, providing for all the lower, the people that are kind of up downtrodden, he's not doing it in a solemn way, like, oh my God, I have to do this or these people are going to die. He's doing it because it's what he's called to do. It's his joy. Um, and it's a game because on some level he can see the bigger picture of the power play between and he's there to balance the um, playing field, right? And so to him it's all a game, it's all an adventure. Um, because raccoons, where, where the Robin Hood thing comes from, raccoons, when they go out to forage for food, they always bring the food back to the family to make sure that like the young or the sick or the the elderly get fed before they eat. And so raccoon, when raccoon comes up, it's usually some kind of community service type thing. Something you're doing to improve the community. But it might be something like, this came up in a, in a reading I did earlier today for somebody, but it's kind of like um, that cheerfulness, that lightness of spirit and helping somebody where they don't realize even that you're helping them because you're helping them to find their own power. You're not taking credit. It's like, like Robin Hood leaving a bag of coins at, in the, at, on the doorstep or something of someone that's poor and needs the money. It's, he doesn't stick around for the credit. He doesn't, this is me, this is what I'm doing. There's a humility that comes along with that. And the whole point is to help to empower others, to real, make them, you know, you might be nudging them, you might be pointing them in the, it's like, hey, what's that over there? And then you blend into the background and let them see what they see and discover their own lessons and their own truths without having to force it on them, if that makes sense. So there's the trickster, the, the jolly joyfulness. Um, but the thing that's, the, the one thing that is tricky is, you know, the most obvious part of raccoon medicine is the mask, right? So, like I like to, it's kind of like from the, um, the movie, The Man in the Iron Mask, when the Three Musketeers rescued King Louis and got the mask off of him. And then his evil brother put him back in the mask and put him in prison again. Like the second time he was like, they were like, oh my God, that must be awful to have that mask thrust back on you. And he was like, no, because this time I wear the mask. The mask doesn't wear me because he knew who he was underneath the mask. The mask was not his identity. But in our world, we have this tendency to change masks and we use masks as a way to hide from the world, right? And so if we're at work, we wear one mask that's acceptable there. If we're out with our friends, we wear another mask. If we're at the family, we wear a whole nother mask. But the reason we're wearing those masks is to avoid being seen. We're hiding behind the masks so that nobody sees our truth. Um, and so it's worn out of fear. In those cases, the mask owns you because you can't be seen without it. You won't be seen without it. 
But if we can turn that around and, and realize who you are, realize your divine nature, you know, you are a being of light and love. That's who you are at your essence. Um, and when you realize that identity, then, and like I said earlier about the, the orchestra and following your heart, watching the conductor, um, when you're doing that, then you can change instruments, you can change tempos, you can put on different masks because you're wearing the mask, it's not wearing you. And that, in that case, the mask becomes an interface. It becomes a portal. It opens a portal between people rather than a barrier. Because through this mask, um, you can speak to others in a language they understand. I heard this wonderful phrase a long time ago um, when a woman mentioned jumping metaphors, right? So, like I mentioned earlier, with your personal mythology, there's certain things that are symbolic, that mean something to you. And different groups kind of have their own language, their own um, buzzwords, whatever. And because you're coming from the center, from that place of divinity and love, you know that all those different words, all those different things are the same thing. And so it doesn't matter if you call them spirit guides or angels or animal spirits or ancestors. They're all coming from the same place, you know. Um, and in the, the class where I heard the woman use that, that, that phrase, she was saying it was, it was a, a class about death midwifery, like helping people as they're dying, as they're passing over like rebirthing them into the other world. And so she was talking about the way you talk to your clients. You know, if they're Christian, like I was I was raised Catholic. So if I wanted to set sacred space and help them connect and be at peace, I might call in, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? If the person I was working with is pagan, I might call in earth, air, fire, and water but it's all the same thing. It's just the meaning to that particular person. When you realize that language, then you can speak from that heart and whatever you say will come through. Whatever mask you wear will um, be inviting to the person. It will be, um, what do I want to say? It makes you more approachable. It makes you friendlier. Um, so that is the way, the healthy way to utilize masks. Um, yeah. Okay. He's also talking about bringing in the trickster thing. Um, you can also help people by pretending to be something you're not. Um, not not in a mean-spirited way to trip people up or anything like that, but, okay, okay, okay. Um, like I kind of mentioned it earlier, it's like instead of pointing people, pointing something out to someone, asking a question, like like playing dumb, like, gosh, what do you think that means? Or how would how would you go about that? You know, not having to be this, you know, again, bringing in the toxic masculinity. I know all the answers and you can man, mansplain it away. And this is what you're supposed to do. Come in from that friendly um, kind of gesture, like, wow, I wonder what that means. And to like empower people and to get them thinking, to get them in, in alignment with their own heart rather than giving them the answers, allowing them to take those footsteps toward their own empowerment. So, so that is our reading for tonight. Woohoo! I did it in 45 minutes. Wow, I was afraid I was going to... I tend to get a little bit 
verbose and go overtime, which is kind of one of the reasons I went. Birthday I, card. What? Birthday card. Birthday card? Oh. Today is my dad's birthday in heaven and my fiance's mother's birthday in heaven. So I am going to pull a card for them since, since it's their birthday and since we've got some extra time. So what... What do they want to add to tonight's reading? Ha <laughs> ha! What is it? Mountain lion. <laughs> Be your own leader. Like, I don't know if you've heard of Shaman Durek before, but he's got this program called be your own damn guru. You are the leader in your life. This, this, this is perfect. Thanks, Dad and Mom. Um, living by your heart, listening to your heart and your part in the orchestra, watching the conductor. When you move from your heart, your heart is your authority. A leader is someone who lives from their heart. Their heart is their authority. So you become inwardly driven rather than trying to figure out what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and so a leader is someone, you know, if you think about the people you most admire, the people who are heroes in the world or heroes, you know, your own heroes, like even comic book heroes or TV heroes, or like Martin Luther King, or anyone else you can think of that you admire, or teachers that you knew. The ones that are our biggest heroes are the ones who were not walking the common path, right? They were walking to the beat of their own drum. Those are leaders. They're the ones that not only change the world, they change the way we think. They change the way we perceive. They show us a different way of being that we hadn't thought about before. And so a leader creates more leaders. A leader is not someone who has followers, who has minions following them around, all their little yes men and those who just want the leader to be happy so that they gain favor. A leader, a true leader, doesn't need that. Um, <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? It starts with an A. Ac uh, I'll figure it out. But anyway, they don't need that fawning all over them. They Because they're in, in, empowered by their heart. They have everything they need from their heart. They don't need the outside validation. So... Be your own leader. And, you know, mountain lions are pretty solitary creatures. <coughs> um, and they're far-ranging creatures. One cougar might have a 30-mile perimeter that is their territory. But the thing is, is that, like most cats, if you've ever watched cats, they tend to walk the perimeter of their territory. They don't spend a lot of time in the middle. And so you can have a lot of cats in the wilderness in a, in a given area because most of the time their paths don't cross. And so what the point I'm getting to is walk your own path. If you're walking someone else's path, it's not your path. If you're not breaking ground, it's not your true path because your path should be unique to you. And so with that, with that leadership, with that knowledge, you have a voice. This is about finding your voice, expressing your in, insides outward. And so that means setting boundaries, setting territory. You know, it's, it's, you have claws and you have teeth. You can defend yourself. 
but a lot of times, especially in the animal kingdom, bearing teeth, hissing, showing claws is communication. It's a means to avoid conflict. It's not a show of, I'm going to kill you. It's a sign of, I don't want to kill you. It's, I'm, I'm ready to if I need to. I will defend my territory. This is the line. You do not belong here. This is my space. Don't cross this line. Or this is the consequence, right? And I'm not talking literal. I'm not talking about beating someone up if they cross the line. But um, it's that ability to stand your ground. And what, what it reminded me of is like the way that you learn karate so that you don't have to use it. Um, because once you know karate, it becomes a part of you. It becomes a part of the energy that you express. And so people just look at you and know that they don't want to mess with you because you carry, because your heart is your authority, you, you imbue everything you do with authority. And so very rarely are you going to have people challenging you. And so it's, it's like the more you know yourself, the more authentic you are, the less you need to defend yourself. You have the ability if you need to. But usually just by burying your fangs, showing those claws, people are going to back down because they realize that you mean business and that you are authentic. You're not hiding anything. You're like, this is what you're going to get. You're not hiding, you're not insinuating, you're like, this is what you get. So be your authentic self, listen to your heart. This card is for all of you, no matter what number you picked. This is this is a birthday card from my dad and my mother-in-law. They actually both match that card. They do, they, they match this card. They were both, they were both very unique individuals. I don't think my dad knew fear. It was like everything was an adventure and he would just go off and do things. And it was kind of like he had that attitude, like, what are they going to do to you? You know, it's like, do what you're going to do. Try it out. Let's go on an adventure. Be the leader. Move into unknown territory. Um, and be yourself. So... That is our reading for today. Is there anything else that I wanted to say with Mountain Lion? It's the teeth and the claws, the hardness, that allows any cat to be able to turn on their back and purr and be soft. It's the hardness that... Um, allows the softness to take place. It's the balance of masculine and feminine. That is healthy masculine energy. Holding space, being the space where the softer feminine, creative, mysterious energy can take place, can take root. And the masculine is to give it support and um, form. And I'm not talking men and women. I'm talking masculine and feminine within each of us. So Mountain Lion is a great example of that balance, that wholeness. So listen to your heart. Be the leader that the world... Be the leader you needed when you were a kid. What can you do in your life now? What does, did your heroes and your leaders inspire in you and how can you bring that into your world to inspire others okay yay awesome so once again i'm not going to go into the meanings but number one if number one was your card you got turkey just a reminder number two you got bear number three you got raccoon and everybody got mountain lion Woohoo! 
So that is our reading for this week. I hope you enjoyed that. If you're new here, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you come back next week. Um, tell your friends. Feel free to share this video. I will post it to my Facebook page after this, and I will also upload it to my um, YouTube video channel, which is also Perching Wolf Studios. Um, and if you enjoyed that and would like a personal reading with me, feel free to connect with me. You can do so on my website, perchingwolfstudios.net, um, or through Facebook. Um, and you can check out on my website the other things I do, the other shamanic services I offer besides readings. When I do a reading for an individual, I do a spread as kind of a medicine wheel spread. So you get five cards or more that are pointed just at you. This is kind of a, um, you know, New York Times horoscope kind of thing. It's more generalized, but if you need to know which animals are stepping in to help you, you need some guidance, we can do that. And the animals are pure love. They want you to succeed. And it is amazing. I actually, a lot of times my clients will cry in, in readings and I had a couple of people cry today and there was actually a point where I cried in a reading for somebody else it was amazing so anyway so please think think about that you know I am here especially in these weird times of the pandemic this weird time of starting to reopen the world um, trying to find the new normal all of that um, I am here to support you Come and find me on my website or on Facebook. Check out the, the um, services I offer to help you. Or even if you don't know what I can do for you, let's just talk and see what I can do. And I can do readings. I can, I can do shamanic journeying and check with your guides or my guides. I can do guided meditations to help you find your own answers. What I am all about is empowering you. The more empowered people we have on the planet, the better off we all are. Remember, Turkey? So, I am here to help you. Um, is there something else? Oh, and if you enjoyed this video, I also do another live video every week on Wednesdays. Wednesdays at 7, I do a, a sacred pipe ceremony where I create safe and sacred space um, and it's a place for us to gather in a virtual space a virtual yet real sacred space to join our prayers and our intentions together to connect to creator to get answers to offer intentions just to breathe it's I, and i purposely did it on wednesday night so that smack dab in the middle of the week to give you a breather to give you a space where you can just let go and relax. Take the world off your shoulders. Let down the shields because we're creating space around you that will protect you for that, that hour or whatever time. Um, and you can just, you don't have to do anything. Even if you just come to hang out, I would love to have you there. It's These two things are like two of the highlights of my week. And I love them. And I, I so appreciate your coming and showing up. Um, you really do make a difference. I'm not just saying that. I, I so appreciate your coming and tuning in to me, getting what guidance you can. It's a two-way street. What helps you helps me. So let's, let's heal together. So um, I think that's it for tonight. Happy birthday, Dad. Happy birthday, Pat. Happy birthday. Um, thank you for joining me. Join me next week. Invite your friends. Join me Wednesday night. But until I see you next, know that I love you and that I see you and that I honor you. So have a wonderful, wonderful week. Um, feel free to watch this again anytime you need. You can watch it again. Choose a different number to get different guidance. I've got a bunch of these videos on my YouTube channel, so you can pick a whole different week. It doesn't have to be the current one. Choose a number and see what the guidance for that one is. Um, there's always help for you. So feel free to access all of that. So take care of yourselves, love yourselves, 
Know that you deserve it. Know that you are worthy of everything you desire. Okay? You are perfect the way you are. You truly, truly are. There is nothing wrong with you. You are a divine being of light and love. So let that radiate. So have a good week. I will see you later. And until next time, go shining. All right. Bye.